All right, here's a fairly typical, um, but also not very practical related rates problem um, because this is not how um, police cars actually measure speed. Uh, we have a, a, a police car that's traveling in a direction which is perpendicular to the direction of travel of some other car and he's trying to measure the speed by radar, right? Um, now, normally they try to measure radar in a straight line, so you don't have to do these sorts of calculations, right? Cops aren't doing calculus on the side of the road when they measure you with a radar gun. It's not something that happens. Uh, now, of course, the trouble with one of these types of problems is you can see that the, the problem takes up most of the board, right? Um, the, these can be very wordy kind of problems to, to put in all the details. But we can sum up this whole paragraph with a reasonably small diagram. Here's an east-west road. Here's a north-south road. Okay. Here's our police car. Okay, and that police car is traveling north at 30. We've got this, oops, lost the microphone. Our other car is over here, traveling east at, well, we don't know. Okay, so that's what we're starting with. Now, um, what we want to do here is we want to introduce three distances. So we want to introduce this distance. So let's call this x, right? Which is going to be the distance from the intersection to the car. We're going to let y be the distance from the police car to the intersection. And we're also going to draw in the hypotenuse here. Right, uh, and label that Z. Okay, so we've got a right angled triangle. We've got three sides of a right angled triangle. Well, we know what the relationship is between three sides of a right angled triangle. Pythagoras gives it to us. X squared plus Y squared equals Z squared. Okay, all right. So that's all well and good. We have that relationship. Now, the other thing we need to work out here is what are the quantities involved? What's changing, what's not changing? Um, if they are changing, at what rate? Okay. Now, one of the things that we have to be careful about, and this is a very common mistake, right? Both vehicles are 0 0.5 miles away. So this is telling us that you know, we're, we're at some point we're going to be interested in what happens when x equals 0 0.5 and y equals 0 0.5. But those aren't values that we're going to put in at the beginning because those values are not constant, right? Both vehicles are moving and both vehicles are moving. So these are changing, right? Now at some moment in time, that moment being the, the moment at which they, they take that speed measurement, those are going to be the values, right? So that's going to come into play at some point, but not yet. All right. Now, uh, what else do we know? 30 miles per hour. This is what? Well, it's, it's the rate at which the police officer is moving, which is the rate at which y is changing. So what this tells me is this tells me dy dt. Um, but we have to be a little bit careful here, right? Don't think of these as coordinates. I mean, this looks a little bit like a Cartesian coordinate system, but don't, don't think of them as coordinates. Think of them as distances and ask yourself, is that distance getting smaller or bigger? Well. The car is moving towards the intersection, right? So if we're going towards the intersection, we're getting closer. The distance is getting smaller. So that means that dy dt should be minus 30, right? This 20 here, what is 20? Well, 20 is the speed measured on the radar gun, right? And if, if the police officer is here measuring the speed of the car over there, the radar gun is pointing that way. So, so this must be the value of dz dt. And what are we trying to figure out? We're trying to figure out whether or not the car is over the speed limit, right? And so this means that what we want is we want dx dt, okay? That's what we're trying to get. Okay, 
So how are we going to do it? Well, let's start with our equation here. x squared plus y squared equals z squared. All three quantities are changing with respect to time, so they're all functions of t. So we do implicit differentiation, term by term. The derivative of x squared is 2x, but x is a quantity of t, right? It's a function of t. So when we take the derivative with respect to t, we get a dx dt. Same thing is true for y, right? The derivative of y squared is 2y. We multiply by dy dt. Uh, on the other side, we have z squared. So we get 2z times dz dt. OK, so there's our equation. So now we look at this and we say, OK, um, this is what I want. Um, and now we go through and say, other quantities involved, do we know them? x, yeah, because we're, we're making this measurement at this point when x is 0.5, y is point. This is where those numbers come in, right? So we know x. We know y. Uh, we know dy dt. We know dz dt. Ah, what about z? Well, now what we do is we come back to the original equation. We say, at that moment in time when x and y are both equal to 0 0.5, we have that 1 half squared plus 1 half squared is z squared, right? So a quarter plus a quarter is a half. So 1 half equals z squared implies that at the moment when the measurement is taken, z is equal to 1 over the square root of 2, right? It's one other problem with this example is how's the police officer going to know that the car was exactly half a mile away from the intersection? Um, I, I don't know. Maybe there's a mile marker there. It's not a realistic problem, but it does let us sort of, you know, flex our calculus muscles and figure out what's going on. Okay. So all that's left to do here is solve for the quantity we want. So what is dx dt? We're going to divide everything by 2x. So dx dt is going to be, uh, so all the 2's cancel. z over x dz dt minus y over x dy dt. Okay, so this is going to be, um, z is 1 over root 2, but then we're dividing, or we're dividing by a half, so we're multiplying by 2, right? So times 2 times dz dt, which is this 20, okay, minus, well, x and y were both equal to 1 half, so this is just 1, times dy dt. And remember that dy dt is negative, right? So if we forgot that minus sign, we get, we get a small number here. In fact, we might even get a number which is, we're getting a number which is possibly negative or small. And we'd say, well, that car seems to be going really slow. Um, but it's not the case, right? The numbers actually add up here. So we have, we have root 2 times 20 plus 30. Um, now we got to do we got to do a little bit of thinking, right? Um, what's root two? So root two is approximately one point four. So twenty root two is going to be around twenty eight. Um, so this is going to be around fifty eight miles per hour. Um, so I guess the car is over the limit but not by much. I don't think it's going to get a ticket. Um, of course, it wouldn't have got a ticket anyway because there's no way the police officer would have ever made this radar measurement in the first place, but at least we've seen how to set up these related rate problems.